Supreme Magus, Chapter 46, A New Beginning Almost four years had passed, and over time many things had changed. Two years ago, when Lid was still ten years old, Elisa had reached adulthood. She participated to the Spring Maiden Contest, winning it by a landslide. Between the clothes from the Count, the makeup from Kayla, and the beauty treatment from Lid, she had basically no competition. She has soon started to hang out with several young promising bachelor before finding the right one. His name was Senton, and he was the son of the blacksmith. After dating for almost a full year, they were ready to marry. In that same year, Tista had reached her gross part at the age of 12. She was officially healed from her congenital condition and had started to practice fake magic under Leeds and Nana's guidance. Her mana core had become deep green, and according to Solus, there was still space for it to grow at least up to bright green. Tista was finally able to get out of the house without supervision, starting to make friends with the children of the neighbors. It was too late for her to try to attend to a magic academy. She barely knew the basics of chore magic, but she didn't mind. After being prisoner of her own body for so many years, she had no interest in perpetual challenges. The only thing she really wanted was to enjoy her new life, trying out all the things that had been forbidden to her before. Becoming a magica and inheriting one day's Nana's business was already beyond every expectation she ever had. Even Lid's household had deeply transformed. Between his magic, the help from the Count, and all the money he was able to earn, the walls were now made entirely of stone, only the floor and the roof were still wooden. He had also built a new bedroom for himself that serves as a study too. Lid was getting too old to keep sleeping with his sisters and had no intention of moving in with Ryan. He demanded his personal space and privacy. And since he was the one paying for it, no one could make any objections. As for Lid himself, he had changed deeply, at least physically. Despite having yet to become 12 years old, he was already 1 meter and 60 centimeters high. His thin and scrawny build was only a memory. Now, he had broad shoulders. His muscles were well developed, but not ripe, rather cleverly sizzled. He didn't want to stand out nor to carry useless weight. Lid wasn't planning on becoming a soldier, after all. He was plenty content with a far from average build and a body that was able to react instantly according to his will. His mana core was still cyan, but not deep anymore. Halfway through the light cyan that would precede the next evolution. A mana core on, on the strong end of the spectrum had proven to be much stronger than the previous ones, but at the same time, it put a much stronger burden to Lid's body. He had reached a bottleneck that couldn't be overcome with training or study. Only after hitting his growth spurt, his body would become strong enough to allow him to refine further the mana core. Before such event, the use of accumulation would bring to him only pain and no benefits. Also, since now all his clothes had the Lark's household crest on either the shoulder or the chest pocket, he made full use of his newfound authority, protecting the village in Nana's absence for a fee. Of course, the only criminals he wouldn't take out for free 
were those with a nice dead or alive bounty on their heads. Lead would strictly deliver them feet first. Now that he was almost 12, the number of spells and the skill level he could reveal had increased exponentially. Since now he officially had more than six years of magical training. Seeing him fly around or hunting for pelts or bounties had become a common occurrence in the Lutia village. By having three healers and two protectors, the village kept growing in fame, size and population. It was only thanks to him that Elisa and Santon were able to date each other. Previously, the idea of a son, artisan, marrying the daughter of a humble farmer would have been preposterous. Inside, though, Lid had changed very little. He was still the cynical, mistrustful, broken man he had always been. With no real friends or loved ones outside, his family and solace. Having to deal with criminals, chasing away profligate boys that molested his sisters and interacted with the nobles had further rooted in his mind the idea that mankind, even in the new world, was a plague that he had to avoid. His only real confidant was Solace, and despite all her attempts, she had not been able to change his mind even one bit. He was also in a very bad mood. Damn it, tier 4 spells are really hard. I can manage to reproduce them with true magic, but I still feel they are somehow lacking. Either when I cast them with true or fake magic, something keeps feeling amiss. Yeah, Solus might not it. Maybe it's just my impression, but this kind of spells is supposed to hold some deep and profound concept that we are not able to grasp. Maybe if we had access to tier 5 books, eaves and bots are just a waste of time. Who would have ever thought that Count Lark wouldn't buy them? He is still dead set to send me to Lightning Griffin Academy. No matter how many times I repeat, I prefer being homeschooled. Well, you knew how stubborn the Count can be. Also, from his point of view, not buying the books kills two birds with one stone. He managed to save a mountain of gold and forces you to attend the academy at the same time. During those four years, Lid had relentlessly tried to convince the Count that an academy was not good for him, even resorting to use the need to protect his family and the village as a leverage. But the Count was immovable. Dear Lid, you have a dire need of the academy and I say this only in your best interest. I cannot stress out how important it is to learn how to properly interact with your peers and establish the right connection. Not to mention that you have no friend of your age. You need to socialize, fall in love even, otherwise you'll go into a cranky and cynical man. Been there, done that. Solus giggled. Also, don't worry for your family. As soon as you enroll, they'll gain a newfound status and until your graduation, the Magic Association will take personally care of them. At that point, not even the most reckless madman would try something funny. Lid had run out of excuses and could not tell him the truth. He was sick and tired of being looked down by nobles and foreign merchants. And even resorting to violence or intimidation after a while had lost much of its luster. Lid just wanted to be left in peace and treated with respect like any normal human being.
He didn't know how long he could suffer the contempt and abuse from his so-called peers at the academy before shoving their high and mighty attitude up their throat after taking the tour through their asses. The idea of not being able to practice true magic, spirit magic and fusion magic was enough to give him a big headache. In an academy, he would be crippled, losing all his advantages to not blow his cover. It was a lose-lose situation. Lid's mood was made even worse by the thought of Elisa moving out of the household. After what happened to Carl, he had developed an obsessive compulsive need to know where everyone was at any given time. He needed to feel that everything was under his control to be in peace with himself. If you really love them, you have to let them go. Solus tried to console him. After all, academy or not, when you reach 16 years and leave the house, what are you going to do? Stuff them and store them in the pocket dimension? You need to learn to let go and focus on what's really important for you. If you really wanted to make them your puppets, you wouldn't have cured Tista. Her illness was the perfect leash, yet you willingly choose to free her. They're not Carl. The whole world is not filled with trash like the one that killed him. Lid's mind recognized the truth in her words, but his heart refused to. It would keep screaming, damn the world, they are mine, mine, mine. Is this what a father feels when his children leave the nest? He couldn't avoid noticing that even Raz, despite all the smiles and happiness he showed, was actually quite depressed losing his eldest daughter. If I'm like this with adults, I'm afraid to discover what I would become if children were involved. It seems I'm destined to be single for life. Now that Lid was 11 year and a half, he had reached the minimum age requirement to apply for a scholarship at the Lightning Griffin Academy. Count Lark was waiting for him at his manor for where they would travel to their destination by stagecoach. According to the Count, flying in the vicinity of any building owned by the Mage Association was strictly forbidden. Even to get in the vicinity was needed a special pass and to have set up an appointment through the proper channels. The academy wasn't that far, but using a stagecoach would require several hours of boredom. While looking through the window, Lid could only hope that all those years of preparation and self-sabotaging would pay off. Being actually accepted in such an institution away from home would be the beginning of his worst nightmare.